good day. This is Tom Singer. We're in the new Sinclair Community College Guitar Lab and we're going to show you how to assemble a neck. The previous neck video was a 2012 video. Well, we've changed the processes now of how to assemble a neck, so let's get started. The next step is to uh, sand a transition onto the top edge of our fretboard. This will allow the strings to uh, drop down from the top of the nut down to the tuners on the headstock without the strings digging into the fretboard. It also makes it look a little nicer. It, this is much easier to do with the fretboard off of the neck. Uh, this still can be done after the fretboard's glued on, it's just a little trickier. So in order to do this, we're going to use our belt sander here. So when sanding the, the transition here, it's important to keep in mind that you do not want to affect, you don't, you don't want to uh, shape the back side of this fretboard. This bottom edge here is used for alignment on your neck. So you want to make sure that you don't mess with the bottom edge, rather the top edge. When sanding on the belt sander, you also want to keep in mind, you want to keep this edge, this plane, perpendicular to the to the table. You don't want to set this fretboard right down on the table because now this uh, because of the taper this edge is going to be at an angle. So rather keep it up and try to eyeball a 90 degree angle when you're sanding this edge. And, and also keep in mind not to mess with this back edge. Our next step is to go ahead and drill our fret knots. Uh, we've started doing this before we uh, glue the fretboard onto the neck and that's simply to uh, eliminate um, issues uh, that might arise if you drill a little too deep and you get uh, either fret knot material or glue down into your truss rod slot. Um, we go ahead and we do this before we, we glue the fretboard on the neck, that way that can be fixed. Um, so fret dot positions, fret dots are located at the 3rd, 5th, 7th, 9th, 12th fret and then from the 12th we start back over with that same pattern and it would be 3, 5, 7, 9 or you can add 3, 5, 7, 9 to 12 and that would give you exactly uh, the fret you would be drilling onto. So in order to do this we're going to take a flat edge uh, any sort of a straight flat edge, a uh, ruler works great, and we're just going to uh, make X's from fret to fret on those, on those positions. And so as you can see here, I've already marked these. Now traditionally on, uh, on the guitar, your 12th fret will have two dots on it. So in order to achieve that, we're uh, at the 9th fret going to make our X. We're going to skip the 12th fret, and then make another X on the 15th fret. That would be our, our next fret. Then I'm going to take the ruler and I'm going to connect those two points of the, of the X's we've already drawn and I'm going to make a line. And this is going to serve as our uh, midpoint on this fretboard. Now at the 12th fret, so I'm at 9, 10, 11, 12, I'm going to make two X's. And those are going to be our, where our fret dots will lie for the 12th fret. So there's our 
12th fret. Uh, now you'll go ahead and you'll fill in all the rest. Uh, again, it's 3, 5, 7, 9, 12, and then start back over 3, 5, 7, 9. Okay, so once we have our fret positions marked, and let me take a, a second here to say double check. Uh, you know, go through count double count and then have your buddy count because I have seen I have seen people place uh, their fret dots in the wrong position and nobody wants that so it's always easier to find it now when it's just pencil mark than it is to realize it later when you've already have your inlay uh, installed and finished out so once we have uh, once we have our our positions marked of where our frets are going to go we're going to take a center punch uh, you know, this is a spring-loaded center punch, any sort of a center punch, just to make your mark uh, that will help your uh, drill bit locate where to drill. And I'm just going to go through and mark at the center of all these X's. Okay, so once you have all of your center marks punched, uh, we're going to come over to the drill press. We're using a quarter inch Forstner bit uh, inside of our drill press here to drill uh, each of these holes for the uh, inlay. So it is important to, uh, to, keep it, to, to make sure that you only drill down an eighth of an inch into the fretboard. Uh, these fretboards are close to a quarter of an inch thick. Eighth of an inch is plenty of uh, is plenty of depth to securely glue in your inlay, uh, and so that's what we're going to shoot for. So this should be fairly simple because we've center we've center punched everything. Uh, this particular drill press has a depth readout, and so I've already zeroed it for the surface of my fretboard, and now I'm just going to drill in until my depth readout reads. 125 thousandths or thereabout. And as you can see, we have a, an eighth inch uh, deep hole with no breakthrough on the backside of the fretboard. And ideally, that is what we're looking for. Uh, and you'll repeat this for uh, the rest of the frets you've marked. All right, so now that uh, you've already drilled uh, your quarter inch holes for your uh, fret dot inlay, we'll go ahead and glue that in. Uh, that process involves uh, fret dot material, which uh, should come standard in your guitar building kit. Um, I've gone ahead and cut this in half. That gives me two different pieces, so I can be working two different pieces at a time. Uh, you want to be using some sort of a uh, super glue, uh, specifically a thinner super glue that has a quick drying time. Uh, this is a 5 to 15 second super glue, uh, so that's important. Uh, a Japanese flush cut saw and a note card uh, and probably a mallet would also be a, a, good, uh, a good tool for this. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to take our glue and we're just going to put a little drop into the hole here. We're going to take one of our fret knot material, pieces of fret knot material, right like that and we're just going to tap it in. We're going to take our business, our, our uh, Note card, business card also works. I usually fold it over. This helps set uh, the level at which you'll be cutting. It's kind of important that you're, you're cutting above the surface of the fretboard. You don't want to find yourself cutting into the fretboard. Uh, that could cause a lot more sanding later, later on uh, in the build process. Um, so it's good to kind of let this uh, set up and cure for a few seconds. I'll usually kind of grab it. I can tell that that's already set up. So I'll go ahead and cut it. If you're using a thicker super glue and it takes uh, a longer time to set up, that's where it's important. You got a couple different pieces so you can be letting one piece dry while you're starting on the next piece. Uh, and then you can go back and forth. One thing to note is that I'm keeping my fingers uh, and holding down the fretboard uh, and note card, I'm keeping them behind the blade. It's easy to kind of hold it down like this and you'll find that uh, once you cut through the piece of fret dot material, sometimes you cut your fingers uh, and that's not fun. So I'm just using light pressure, I'm letting the saw do the cutting. One thing that would uh, improve this process is I'm gonna take a clamp 
and I'm going to clamp the fretboard down, and that will uh, that will help me help me in cutting this here. Now the fretboard's not sliding around as much, and I'm almost through. And there it is. So you can see that you have uh, just a little bit of uh, fret dot material sticking over the surface of the fretboard. That's what you're looking for. So now I'll go through and you'll repeat this process uh, for the rest of your fret nuts. In front of us you'll see that we have a guitar body, a guitar neck, a fretboard, the truss rod, tape, glue, screwdriver, and clamps with a rubber band. We also have some uh, a flat surface to go ahead and uh, surf or sand with that we'll get to a little bit later. So the first step is that you need to sand the tab off the end of the guitar neck. So as the guitar neck ships, there'll be a tab on that end that needs to be flanded, sanded flat. The second component is that you need to test fit the neck into the guitar body. Even though there's no finish on the guitar body, the neck must fit snugly into the guitar body. Notice that I'm not pushing hard, it fits with minimal effort into that guitar body. Once finish is on the guitar body and the neck, it will fit a little bit snug. So the first step is that we need to align our fretboard. And to align our fretboard, we first have to mount temporarily a bridge. Now we're not gonna send the screws, the bridge screws all the way into the guitar body. We're just gonna use it for alignment purposes. So we're gonna just do it finger tight. This is just to keep the bridge in a specific location. So that way we have a general idea of the distances that we need to work with. You'll notice that with the guitar bridge, we're going to set the high E string about 3 eighths of an inch between the back of the bridge and the back of the saddle. So it's about 3 eighths of an inch, a little bit longer than that, but right there is about 3 eighths of an inch. The actual string break is where the set screws are on the guitar bridge. So that's the point that we're going to take the measurements from to make sure that we align our fretboard properly. We set the fretboard on the neck. Now the fretboard is designed so that the fretboard lines up to the back of the lip where the headstock is. We've now designed the necks a little bit thicker. They're a .85 thickness now, total depth. And so we've got a little bit different uh, lip that we've now designed into our neck. That also gives a better string break and better sound quality because of that. So we'll set the neck back in place, put the fretboard in location. I'll set the tape measure so that the zero of the tape measure is at the set screws. And we'll take two measurements. The first measurement is to the 12th fret. That value should be about 12 and 3 quarter. Let me set this properly, there it is. So it is about 12 and 3 quarters. The second measurement is going to be the face of the nut. So that would be the front edge of the nut slot. That should be 25 and a half, and you can see that it is spot on. So this, this fretboard and neck combination should remain flush. There has been times that we've needed to shift the fretboard forward. If that happens, draw a line so you have the ability to glue the fretboard in that location, so you have that location spot. In this case, the fretboard matches flush to the back edge, we don't have to draw the line, we're good to go. Once you've accomplished that step of measuring and ensuring that the fretboard is going to intonate properly, and that's what we're doing here, is we're testing for the intonation process, we can go ahead and put the tape measure away and get ready to actually glue the fretboard to the neck. The process of gluing the fretboard to the neck begins with putting some chalk on both surfaces. Now we're not going to take the chalk all the way off both surfaces. We just wanted to make sure that we're hitting all the surfaces with the sandpaper. 
So we'll take it over to the flat sanding surface. We'll hold the fretboard down with our fingers doing circular motion. I'm going to put pressure in a variety of different locations. And again, this is just to, to kiss the high spots of the fretboard. You'll notice that we've taken off a lot of the sand or the a lot of the chalk marks. It's a little bit still thick here. I'm going to go ahead and sand that just a hair more. And now we've got it kissed all the way across the surface. We'll do the same thing with the neck. Now the neck may have a bow in it. It's just the way wood works. So the same process will occur. We'll just do circular motions and all we're trying to do is kiss the neck and take off and touch all the sanding locations. Haven't touched it down here. So again, And now we're starting to touch the chalk. So now that we've got that taken care of, what we can do is get it ready for gluing. To glue the process, to glue the, the neck up in the fretboard, the first step is to put the truss rod in place. You'll notice that the truss rod is different than our older video. This is a new, it totally inserted truss rod. There is a positive and negative, so the, the, notice that the end is slightly offset. The offset goes in the downward direction. The truss rod will actually fit flush to the end of the neck. That's one of the new design changes that we've instituted. So we're going to set the truss rod in place, and when we do that, the truss rod will be flush with the end of the neck. This particular location allows us access through the pickup of the neck pickup location, hence the slot in our guitar body. The second step is that we typically put a piece of tape. Now this is a three quarter inch piece of tape. It could be any, any tape. And the whole idea is that we want to keep as much glue out of the truss rod pocket as possible. What happens is, if you have too much glue and it goes in the truss rod slot, what it will do is it will glue the truss rod in place and hence will ultimately snap the truss rod. Excuse me, snap the neck because the truss rod can't move. So you want to make sure that you keep the glue out of the truss rod slot. So now we've got a, a, a piece of tape on that neck. You want to also have some wet paper towels handy for cleanup. That's one of the, the, the important things is to, as we glue this particular neck, we'll want to be able to clean up very quickly associated with that. So to glue the fretboard onto the neck, you want to lay, lay a, a bead of glue. Now again, we want to cover the surface of the neck, but not have too much glue. So again, I'm going to spread it out with my finger, become one with the guitar neck and just to make sure that we have complete coverage. You'll notice that I'm, I'm only putting glue sparingly on, but I make sure that the total surface is covered. It's okay to get glue on the piece of tape. That will allow you to pull off the glue from that area of the guitar neck. Okay, you do the same to the back of the fretboard, just put a little bit of glue so you don't run into a glue starved joint. Both edges, have a little bit of glue, spread it out with your finger, just so that way the edge of the fretboard does not get glue starved. Okay, the one step that most students forget, pulling the tape. Is it critical to pull the tape? Yes, you want to have the tape off. If you forget to pull the tape, then you won't be able to move your truss rod for about five years until the adhesive of the tape breaks down. Now at this point, the glue is going to act as a lubricant. The fretboard and neck assembly here is going to slide all over the place. So it's really important to use clamps 
before you start to rubber band the attachment. So I'm going to clamp the edge of the neck to the table. I'm going to clamp the fretboard to the neck. I'm going to make sure that the fretboard is lined up with the back edge and then lightly clamp it. And again, it's going to act like a lubricant. So slowly clamp and it's going to shift and move around until we get enough rubber bands or enough rubber band wraps on the neck it's going to continually move around. You'll also notice that there is a slight overhang. Okay, It's not a lot but there is typically a slight overhang. You're welcome to sand that off or you can leave it. Or you can leave it. So I typically begin wrapping with an X pattern. You'll notice that the color of the rubber band, the green, will change to a lighter green when it's stretched. And so we want to make sure that we stretch the rubber band as we wrap. So you want to cover the original tail of the rubber band, stretch it. Don't worry about the centering process. The rubber band will center the fretboard. I will double check, wipe it off, make sure that that's still flush on that end after I wrap about three or four wraps. And I'll continually check as I wrap up the fretboard. Notice that the light color green is apparent, so I am pulling the rubber band, giving it tension, so that way it will hold the fretboard down. So again, at this point you want to make sure, double check. I'll then take the clamp off, continually wrapping all the way up the fretboard into the nut slot. You want to wrap the nut slot twice and then start your path back down the fretboard. You can continue to wipe the glue off from the sides. You want to have glue squeeze, and you want to wipe the glue squeeze off the sides of the neck. Doing this with two people also works. So I'm going to put more wraps down here at the end because I don't have that many wraps at the end. And at this point it's complete. I'll then lift up a rubber band, in this case the green one. I'll tuck this under, wrap it twice, and there we have it. We have a glued neck. The next step is to again use your wet paper towel, continually wiping off the sides. Now the truss rod should come out. If the truss rod has glue on it, you'll want to wipe the truss rod off until there's no glue on the truss rod at all. So you'll slide it back in, again making sure that the silver end is down. Lift up the end, it should slide out check for glue. If you no longer have glue on it, then set it on the shelf. I typically recommend that you leave the truss rod slightly out as it dries. In case the truss rod does dry in place, um, you can um, shear the glue bond and uh, make the truss rod able to move again. So have a great day. I hope this helps. This is the new 2015 model of our neck.